And the next candidate for the 6th District is Casey Helton, a Democrat. Okay, thank you, Rick, thank you, Chamber, and thank you to everyone here who has hung out with us until this late hour. Um, my name is Casey Helton, and I'm running for, as a Democratic candidate for the Livingston County Board of Commissioners seat in District 6. I was a news reporter for the Pinckney Express, a weekly publication that became part of the Daily Press in Argus. And I actually spent a lot of time in this very room during that time because I covered Hamburg Township in addition to the Village of Pinckney and Pinckney Community Schools. So this was one of my beats. Today I serve patients and families as an intake clerk for the pediatric cardiothoracic ICU at CS Mott Children's Hospital. I've been there about 10 years. But lately what I'm probably best known for is my willingness as a newcomer to take on an established political figure like my opponent, who I'm disappointed is not here tonight. I grew up in Marion Township. My mother, Sandy Everly, passed away in 2015, and my father, Rick, who is here tonight, still lives in the home where I grew up. He is a veteran. He's enlisted in the Navy in Vietnam. Um, I graduated Howell High School in 1995, and after attending Eastern Michigan University, I moved back here and later met my husband, Jim, who is also here tonight, the beard guy. Uh, he's a union steel worker, and he is also a U.S. Navy veteran who served in wartime. We have a rescue dog named Obi, and we live in Marion Township. We own a home out there about 10 minutes from my dad. I'm in this race because of people like the grandmother that I met canvassing in a very nice, quiet subdivision in Hamburg Township recently. When I said to her that Livingston County has the fourth highest rate of drug overdose deaths in the state, and there are too many grandparents raising grandchildren in Livingston County because of a lack of services here for addicted people, she looked me in the eye, and as she did, her young grandson peeked from around her hips, and she put her arm around him, and she looked at me sadly, and she said, I know, and it took my breath away because it made me realize it hit me like a ton of bricks, something I already knew, but in looking at her at that moment, I understood this is a problem that goes from house to house to house in this community, and we are turning a blind eye to it here in Livingston County, and it starts with our public officials. I'm in this race because Livingston County has the highest percentage of poorly rated roads in Southeast Michigan, 51%, higher even than Wayne County, which shocks many people in my canvassing uh, activities, I can assure you. That's a 35% increase from 2008. And these roads are going to continue to be a greater threat to economic prosperity and to public safety in our community as long as there is no solid plan for fixing that problem and our leaders refuse to act. Our county commission is responsible for these roads, yet they have no solid plan for fixing the massive problem that this is, even as they sit on $42 million in idle funds, separate from the general fund, separate from the rainy day fund. Instead, they wait for townships to pass special millages to address a problem that they don't really want to deal with. That is imbalanced to townships and unfair, and I think Hamburg Township knows something about that because they have one of those road millages. I want to use a $10 million portion of that idle funding, known as the Delinquent Tax Revolving Fund, to invest $5 million in the Road Commission's top priorities, as well as help our townships and municipalities address the projects that they feel are most urgent to them in the form of a $5 million matching grant fund. That is an actual roads plan. This inaction on the part of my opponent and the rest of the county commission on roads, on a lack of investment in services to address our opioid crisis, on issues like the ET Rover pipeline in Putnam Township and Marion Township, and the inattention, the 
to, to PFAS. I called on my opponent to challenge our state representatives to push them to shut off uh, the effluent that was coming from the source of, of, of this contamination in Wixom, and he ignored me. These sorts of things, it really comes down to being out of touch with the real priorities of our community. Here's some things I want you to consider as an audience. The median age in Livingston County is 42. I'm 41. Yet the youngest member of the county board is well into his 50s. Women make up 49.9% of the community, but we don't even make up 30% of the county board. None of the board members are commuters, despite the fact that the rest of Livingston County, upwards of 76%, do commute. I commute, my husband commutes. I'm sure we all either know a commuter or are a commuter. Thank you so much for your vote, I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you for your time. I didn't mean to go over. <laughs> That's the 6th District. ...to address uh, the city of Arthur at this particular time, Rick. Okay. Please. Yes, um, I find it hard to believe that we know anything about how... The, the, the county board knows anything about how this money is being spent because it didn't even speak up when the uh, committee member misreported the year-end balance at $80,000 when it was supposed to be closer to a million. I don't honestly think anybody on this county commission knows how much money is in this millage right now. If you were to ask them that is a straightforward question. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. The fact that this, there's a criminal investigation surrounding this issue, um, that is a whole other uh, issue that is just, just goes right to uh, accountability and competence. Um, and what we really need, um, I, Democrats who are running for county commission have called for a forensic audit of um, this fund. We've called for whistleblower protections for, uh, the, uh, for Mr. Smitty, who brought this issue into the forefront. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot more, a lot more questions than answers that we have right now, and I don't think anyone can make any conclusions at this point in an accurate way. Doug, we'll start with you with the next question. Do you support continuing Ann Arbor Spark for economic development? And if so, to what extent? Uh, the answer is yes. Um, uh, Ann Arbor Spark and the, uh, the Livingston uh, Development uh, Corporation uh, has mixed reviews in the county because in my district, Conway Township doesn't want to develop. Uh, uh, Iosco Township doesn't want to develop. Unadilla Township doesn't want to develop. The people in uh, District 1 of Putnam don't want to develop. But Fowlerville and Handy Township do want to develop. And they have used uh, Fred Dillingham previous to that. You know, there is a lot of good business in Fowlerville. Uh, and it's one of the easiest places to go good expressway, things like that. Uh, I do favor that. Uh, we did, uh, I favored going down from 200,000 to 175, so that it, to encourage them to get other support. But uh, I think it's very, very good for the county, but not the whole county thinks that. Christina? Yes, I support Spark. Hey, Dennis? Uh, yes, I agree with the uh, with him in regards to this matter. Casey? Uh, yes, I do support Spark, and I think that the uh, original amount needs to be restored for this next upcoming budget year. I think there are regional considerations that need to be made outside of just the township. I'm not running for a township board, I'm running for a county commissioner position, and you have to consider that from a, from a regional, county-wide perspective. What may not work for Marion Township specifically might work from a more regional perspective from for District 6 as a whole. But we've got to do something about our roads because even my opponent said that um, development isn't going to come here if we don't fix that problem. Maureen? I support Spark. I also support the County Commission to look hard at other ways of supporting small businesses across the county so that even in those rural townships, we're doing things that help people stay in business. Yep. You're right. <laughs> uh, we're, start, we're starting here with Christina, with Christina again. The next question. 
The current Board of Commissioners ignored our concerns about the ET Rover pipeline. What are your plans about holding the ET Rover pipeline uh, accountable for the 25 million gallons of gasoline contaminated into the Portage Lake River? Any plans about emergency management with ET Rover? So your thoughts about ET Rover? Um, well, I think one of my um, heroes that I read about was a Washtenaw County commissioner who actually offered to throw his body in front of a machine to stop the ET Rover from going through Washtenaw. Was really disappointed to see my county commissioners not not say a peep. Um, I don't think I'm, I have the expertise to quite put a finger on what I could do to stop it. It's already there. I think we have some serious issues and we need environmentalists to be involved in the decisions that come forward after the already installed ET rover. When, when you say stop, okay, it's like holding that sign up. Um, easier said than done. You just don't run out in the field and tell we're over, hey, stop that equipment. Take that pipe out of the ground, do this, do that. It doesn't work that way. It has to be run through the entire channel and system as though it's going in. And I find it hard to believe that any one of us here in this room this evening would have that and jointly have that capability here at this table tonight to be able to do that as much as we may want to at times. You know, it's just like the PFAS in our water. We didn't start this, okay? We have it here in Hamburg Township now. What a sad, sad situation, all right? But we're stuck with it. Again, not an easy thing to, to overcome. Uh, yes, uh, sadly, I agree. This is a case of hindsight when it comes to ET Rover. One of the first things I did when I decided to run for county commission was to go out and visit a dewatering site right there on the border of Putnam Township. It was a mess, and um, it is a situation of advocacy. I think that's the key word, the difference between Washtenaw County and Livingston County when it came down to Rover at the time was that Washtenaw County advocated for their citizens who lived along that pipeline while Livingston County commissioners remained silent and reaped profits, um, financial benefits, I would say, uh, from that arrangement in the form of security contracts for the sheriff's department, uh, working part-time officers on that site. Um, that is not advocating for the people who live along that pipeline. And uh, there was property values have plummeted out there. There's pollution. It's, it's terrible. And no one was speaking for them. And uh, I happened to talk to somebody who told me that she contacted my opponent for a meeting and he never even called her back. That is not public service and I have a big problem with it. Marie? I think our, um, we've talked a lot about just what a glorious place we all live in. Um, the, we depend so much on the open spaces and the beautiful waters. Um, it's sinful to not be exercising every strategy possible to keep that land and water clean and ecologically functioning. Um, I think that at the county level, we can grow the skills it takes to lead and advocate and be visionary instead of, um, instead of conservative. Okay, uh, it, it, as I see the Rover Pipeline uh, and the PFAS thing, they're kind of the same. It's an environmental issue. It is an environmental problem. And the question that you have is, what do we do without our pipeline system? Are we willing to, get, to give it up? I don't think so. Are we willing to give up, you know, uh, foam, uh, fire suppressant? I don't think so. Are we willing to, to uh, scotch guard in our clothes? Are we willing to give that up? Oh, yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. But if we're willing to do that, that is part of the price of living in a modern society. Um, and I think if you took a vote, you know, the Rover Pipeline would pass in Livingston County. That's, you know, that's kind of what I think. Dennis, we're going to go next with you. Uh, 
What tax related changes would you make in this county? I'm sorry, Rick. What tax related changes would you make in this county? Tax related changes? 